Is there a difference in a pre-qualification and a pre-approval? So yes, there is. Pre-qualification is going to be where a mortgage lender has taken all of your information, you know, how much you're making, what you're spending, um, everything like that. And they're going to review those documents and based off the information you've given them, they're going to issue you a pre-qualification. Now with a pre-approval, they're going to take that a step further and actually dig into everything and verify it and issue a pre-approval once everything has been verified. If you have been pre-approved before starting the housing search, make sure your agent lets you know whoever you're submitting offers know that you are pre-approved because that is a major difference and will offer a little bit of certainty that this deal is a little closer to getting to the table and may make you stronger than somebody who is offering right there about the same as you but has only been pre-qualified. That's the difference between your pre-qualification and a pre-approval. How long does it take to get pre-approved? So uh, pre-approval, I mean, if you're working with a good lender, they should be able to get you that information fairly quickly. Um, you know, pre-qualification I can usually have within the hour uh, for them to actually go through, do the research and issue an actual pre-approval. Say within a week, you know, you should have that information. If you don't, um, reach out, see what's going on and uh, you know, just keep them on their toes. How do agents get paid? So as an agent, um, we are you know, 1099 contractors. You know, we are paid commissions. You know, if we don't get you to the closing table, we do not get paid. In a typical transaction, what you're gonna see is the listing agent and the seller have agreed on a price to offer to a buyer's agent, and they've also agreed on a price that the listing agent's gonna make for the listing and the sale of that home if it closes. That is negotiable. You know, there are no set fees or standard rates that we could go by, but that is how agents are paid. Are closing costs included in the down payment? So actually your closing cost and down payment are gonna be separate. Depending on the loan type you use, your down payment could be anywhere from 0% for loans like USDA and VA, or it could go up you know, 20% or higher for your conventional products. Um, closing costs are going to be your lender fees, your title fees, any kind of prorations, and those are going to be separate. Um, something that we're seeing a lot of today is you know, agents putting you know, $5,000 for closing costs, which used to almost always get you by. Be careful, you know, taxes have gone up, insurance have gone up, and those numbers don't always work out the same. So be sure to get with your lender and make sure you understand what your closing costs are gonna be, as well as your down payment to make sure that you've got enough for both of those come time for closing. How much money do I need to hire you? So it really depends, you know, if you're a buyer, in most cases, you're gonna be a free service. You know, the listing agent and the seller have determined a price to offer to buyer's agents. So as a buyer, um, unless you've got an agreement with your agent showing what you're going to be paying them, if there's a gap or something like that, your service is gonna be free. For a seller, it's completely negotiable. You know, if your agent's telling you that there's a set standard on what they're charging for their commissions, you know, it's, it's illegal. <laughs> Um, we're, we're not allowed to do that. It is negotiable, um, but you get what you pay for and you know, you don't want to leave any money on the table. If somebody's not going to argue for their money, I highly doubt they're going to argue for your money when it comes time to negotiate. So think about that when you're hiring your agent. What sets you apart from the other agents who want to help sell my home? I think the you know the biggest thing here is um, I'm dedicated. You know I don't do this part time. It's it's a full time job for me. I absolutely love what I do, and I think you know most people that have dealt with me will tell you I'm, I'm no pressure. You know if we receive an offer that is not good for your property and you don't want to accept that offer, you're never going to feel me twist your arm to do something that you don't want to do. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do the opposite. You know, if something's not in your best interest, I'm not gonna wait for you to call it out to have that conversation. I'm gonna bring it up to you up front and we can knock that out and make sure that we're on the same page and we're getting the best results for you. Personally, I think that's my best attribute. What happens if my house doesn't appraise? If your house doesn't appraise, you do have a few options there. Um, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go back to the seller and see if they're willing to come down to the appraised value. If they're not willing to come down and we don't have the money to bridge the gap in cash, 
then that deal is most likely dead. If the seller's willing to come down, that's great. The bank will loan you up to the appraised value, so everything works out okay. The other option there is to negotiate somewhere in the middle, and we find a common ground for the seller and you. Maybe we split the difference 50-50, uh, but ultimately, it is negotiable.